How's it going? Been asked by a couple of the newer viewers to do a bit of a walk around the aquaponics just so everyone gets an idea of how it's all set up. Uh, it's going to be a very rough one. I'm not going to get into the chemical side of things like the testing, the pH, and uh, the nutrient testing and all that sort of stuff. I'll leave that for another clip. We don't want another epic. So we'll start off here at the cabinet. And this is pretty much all where I keep all my bits of electrics. Up here we have a backup air pump, it's a DC air pump, Please straighten up, a DC air pump is connected to this battery here. This battery was on the charge last night so that's why that's still on there. Um, yeah so what that does is, it, I'll just mimic a power outage, power goes off and that pump kicks in and sends loads of lovely air into the fish tank. So it's actually run by all controlled I mean by this little relay when the power is on this little relay is kept open so there's no power passing through there to get to the um, pump itself but when the power is turned off or there's a blackout it's actually run at the moment by this little adapter down the back there so when the power goes off that little contact goes to a relaxed position and that's when the power is allowed to pass through it closes it off the switch the power can pass through from the battery to the pump and that goes off so pretty basic We've used it twice, it's, it saved us during a blackout and once when I accidentally turned off the power under the house. Chelated iron, there's a couple of elements that um, fish food doesn't contain, seems basically what you're doing is the plants are growing on processed fish food. Iron's one of them, so we give the guys some iron, probably about a tablespoon in every bed once a month, so just I put it just under the inlets. We have the food, our food is a mixture. I'm using up some Lucky Star uh, from Grow Best and also some Ridley's. Um, the Lucky Star is a perch and the Ridley's is a native. Battery charger for the battery. Down here's the air pump. It's a 3500 litre an hour air pump. Um, it's overkill for the one tank we've got, but in the future we'd like to add another two. So yeah, it, it'll be more than enough for the three tanks altogether. The air all goes underground here and up through this pipe, um, that's the, the constant line that's always on but not at the moment and they're the little backup stones. There's the fish, all fairly happy, they want a bit of a feed but I'll wait till after I finish here. These pipes down the bottom, they're what actually send the water from the fish tank out to the system. So this one at the front here sends the water to the radial flow filter, a bit bright, which is sitting just here. That one there just takes the suspended solids out of the water and like the solid fish poop and they settle to the bottom for us to draw off later. And the one over the back there rises up and goes out that white line that goes off to feed the grow bed. So the idea behind these pipes, they're called slows, solid lifting outlets, is they think fish want to feed. They've got holes in the bottom, so what they do is they draw the, the solids and the nutrient rich water from the bottom of the tank up the pipes and out to the grow, um, grow beds or to the filter. That way the new water that comes in at the top over this corner from the sump tank has time to circulate through here so the fish aren't swimming through the same water over and over and over again. Down the back there you can't really see it I don't think. Oh you might be able to, there's fish in the way though. There's an air stone. So it's a bit dark down in there. That air stone is what pretty much all powers this system. I'll turn it on now for the fishies. That's what keeps the water all nice and oxygen rich. So, bubbling away there in the corner. It'll probably go on a little bit harder, but yeah, I'll fix that in a little while. So, when the water leaves, into the filter to get the solids out, or down here along the grow bed. I have a master switch there. I've got a little bit of piping that I can add something to at a later date. Down around the corner here, there was a constant flow over the back that turned out to be a very good solids filter. Uh, so, yeah, it caused me a few issues, so I've taken it out and I'm going to um, remake it into a cracky style bed, or a modified version. Water goes out through those taps, onto these little Brillo pads that help collect some of the finer solids, and then into these beds. These beds are flood and drain, so what that means is that water slowly fills these beds up so it slowly rises and then they end up getting a vacuum uh, not vacuum a siphon ends up starting in these little shrouds here and draws all the water away really quickly just to trace that water pipe 
comes down from that other grow bed over there through the center of this bed down here to this tap here and to this tap here this plumbing actually will be changed in the near future when we start to rearrange some bits and pieces for the expansion but for now it's pretty much all staying as is I normally don't like to leave the handles on them either because little kids like to play with taps but if there's no handles it's a bit hard for them so we'll have a bit of a look in here no uh, that one's not going to go we'll have a look in this one yeah this one's going to go off soon so we might be able to catch him so as the water comes in it fills up around that stand pipe and once it get once enough of it's flowing over the top it will actually cause a siphon the water comes in through these little holes in the bottom here and then um, yeah it creates a siphon once the water level drops air starts coming through the top of those holes and it's also drawn back up through the end of the um, pipe work that sits in the sump this is a bit of a long pipe so just to confuse you I actually had to put an air break in it so because the pipe was so long it was hard for the air to get up through the end there and all the way up into the bell to break the siphon so I've just made a little bit of a um, attachment there works really well for me so this bell's just about to go off so I'll give you a listen what you can hear is all the air trying to get back in to break the siphon so a lot of the air is coming straight from directly from the bell and it makes a couple of these burping noises and then in the end it makes one large burp sometimes a small one and that's pretty much all the end of that and then the bed fills again so they only got a little burp this time so they didn't really hear it so that's it with that cycle the bed will start now start to fill so we grow in these clay balls. Uh, what happens is the bacteria set up shop in here and the bacteria set, uh, transform the ammonia that comes out of the fish's gills and out of their other solids waste into nitrites. And then a separate uh, lot of naturally occurring bacteria turn the nitrites into nitrates. Um, and the plants pretty much will take up all the nutrients, that's the idea. And then once the water goes through here, back into the sump it is cleaned for the fish back in the fish tank so it's a pretty it's a pretty neat little system uh, just quickly other people not everyone uses these clay balls they're actually rather expensive but what you can use is uh, scoria lava rock expanded shale little pebbles rocks anything used in hydroponics can pretty much will be used in aquaponics deep water culture nutrient film technique I'm actually going to try the crack key method or the modified version so yeah down here in the sump tank we have a few little bits and pieces we have a pump over in that corner that takes the water back up to the fish tank and I also have a cutoff switch or a cutoff float when the float falls in the water it, a little ball inside falls to the end and turns the power off so the, the plug on the pump is actually hooked up to the plug on that so it's a little piggyback arrangement in here we've got goldfish they should be coming out we need really need to find a home for those guys they can go somewhere else and we'll just leave the little flame tail gudgeons in there that little pump down in there it just runs constantly so um it's a it's a really good little unit they're a little magnetic drive so nothing really burns out on them i can actually turn the water going into the fish tank i can actually regulate that turning it up and down and i won't put any extra pressure on that pump at all the water then comes up through that pump up this black pipe along there and the cycles all started again uh, the new water comes through, the fish poo and um, excrete ammonia through their gills in it and off it goes on its way to get cleaned in the grow beds again. Just quickly on the way our beds are set up and the way the IBCs are being cut, um, a lot of people just do a cut it, flip the lid over and then you have a grow bed and a cut at the bottom and there you have a grow bed. I did that for the sump tank. The sump tank is one IBC, I've made a cut, flipped the top over and turned it into a grow bed and the bottom is the sump tank has been partially buried into the ground. With these grow beds, I went down a different path. Um, I cut the side off. I went around there, all the way around, and cut the side off. That way, I can use this cage to actually get the grow bed to sit on. And just for the sides, because there's no sides at the top here, or down at the bottom, uh, what I've done is I've just made up a bit of a bracket here, pop riveted that onto the frame, and screwed a piece of timber on along the front here been nice and primed and painted up so it's weatherproof and the grow bed sort of just leans against that and it won't bend out so 
that worked out really nicely it was a really cheap little build um, no big issue just on the painting as well what I did was I used a primer, a primer by Norglass called um, No Rust it sticks really well to plastic you can scratch it off if you want to but yeah generally it doesn't scratch off or lift off I have found though that where I've painted on the edge here and it hasn't sealed properly I've had water run underneath as you can see and it's sort of lifting the paint a bit so I think on a big thing like a fish tank with a lot of water over the sides I might actually do a lining on the outside of that but yeah the plumbing is pretty basic with these guys um, what I'm using here are bulkhead fittings you just cut a hole you put the bulkhead fitting through then you screw your adapters on and then straight onto your PVC that's what's underneath all these grow beds here as well just little bulkhead fittings and then the PVC runs into them it seemed to be at the time the easiest way to go but I've only just recently discovered we can get uni seals here in Australia um, in America they're used extensively you drill a hole you put a rubber seal in the uni seal and then you push your pipe through and it's watertight so found a very local supplier of them thank you Paul who's helped me out in many ways aquaponically so that's pretty much all it for a quick tour of the garden. Um, I have probably left loads out. Uh, if you do have any questions, pop them in the comment section below. Like I said, I will do the, the chemicals and the, the um, nitrogen cycle and the testing in another clip. Uh, it's just, I've gone on too long here as it is. And also too, when it comes to cutting up and plumbing up the tanks and the grow beds, I'll actually do a separate clip on that when I do the expansion in the system. I, it's a bit hard to explain, with, I tried to do it the other day, make up a clip, it's a bit, little bit too hard to do unless you actually get the tools out, so I'll show you what tools you, what I used, what tools I've used, how I've plumbed them up, and some little additions I'm actually thinking about putting into the new grow beds when I make them, so anyway, I've got somewhere I have to be, so I better wrap this up, and I'll say catch you later and have a great one, take it easy.